influence, which is the ability to effect or impact change on others, is very significant in life. Most of the things we do or fail to do are products of internal or external influences. In fact, life is a trajectory of influence, which could be direct or indirect. Until recently, nobody believed that influencing people could be a dedicated career or profession. Today, we have men and women across the globe who function as influencers, mostly leveraging the social media space, and they have a lot of following. However, beyond the craze and the craving to influence others, the world seems to have forgotten that there is one eternal influencer, the eternal animator of existence, the creator spirit, the source and summit of dynamis and exousia, the Holy Spirit. Come, my dear friends, let us take a moment to explore the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Welcome, my dear friends. This is Pentecost Sunday. I am so excited to celebrate this feast with you. The word Pentecost means 50th. It commemorates among the Jews 50 days after the Passover. In Mosaic time, as we see in Deuteronomy chapter 16, from verse 9 to 10, it celebrates the Feast of the Weeks. It also marks the beginning of the wheat harvest. So it was celebrated as a thanksgiving time to God for His providence and His protective love upon the people. It also commemorated the giving of the law to Moses, as we see in Exodus chapter 34, verse 28. From this brief description, my dear friends, we understand that Pentecost itself is an annual feast amongst the people, just as we have various holidays around the world. For instance, Memorial Day and Thanksgiving Day in the United States of America. The Pentecost Day is very significant because it marked the day the Holy Spirit came down on the apostles in fulfillment of the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 8, when he said, that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit had come upon them. This event, which we see in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, is what most scholars would call the Ecclesia Pentecost, because on that day, the church, the community of God's people was animated through the outpouring power of the Holy Spirit, which those who were there at the upper room received. My dear friends, it is important for us to note that the Holy Spirit had always been in operation eternally with the Father and the Son, though He was not manifestly known as we do today in the New Dispensation. If we go to the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Word of God tells us that the Spirit of God was over the waters at the inception of the created world. Furthermore, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, we encounter another manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The Word of God tells us that God created man from the dust of the earth, and God breathed on him and he became a living being. Our Lord Jesus Christ will repeat this model in John chapter 20 from verse 21 to 22, when he showed up at the upper room while the disciples were hiding away for the fear of the Jews. The Word of God tells us that after wishing them peace, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, the life and mission of our Lord Jesus Christ was an overwhelming work of the Holy Spirit. Recall that when the angel came to Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 32 and communicated to her the plan of God that she would become the mother of Jesus Christ, Mary said, How can this happen since I am a virgin? Responding, the angel Gabriel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the child will be called the Son of the Most High. At the inception of his ministry, our Lord Jesus Christ declared the words of Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 upon himself, where he says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me 
to proclaim good news to the poor, to announce liberty to captives, sight to the blind, and also to bring freedom to the oppressed, as we see in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Furthermore, when Peter was preaching in the house of Cornelius, he talked about Jesus Christ anointed with Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing those who were held under the bondage of the evil one, as we see in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 38. Our Lord Jesus Christ knew very well that the disciples would be unable to fulfill the ministry he was leaving behind for them without the Holy Spirit. And that was why in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 verse 4, he instructed them not to leave Jerusalem until they were clothed with the power from on high. My dear friends, let us now take a look at some of the manifest function of the Holy Spirit in our Christian journey. First is fellowship. Recall that in John chapter 14, verse 16, Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. That means that the Holy Spirit is coming as a permanent resident. And that also means that there is the need for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The Christian life will be impossible and impracticable without the Holy Spirit. To buttress this point of fellowship, St. Paul will end most of his letters with the dosology, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The second function of the Holy Spirit is teaching and guidance. In John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus said to his disciples, But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will teach you everything I remind you of all I have said to you. In this wise, the Holy Spirit becomes our teacher. In fact, the best teacher. And we should also know that true teaching comes with guidance. And that was why in John chapter 16 verse 13, Jesus said that the Spirit will guide you to the whole truth. And we know that Jesus Christ himself is the truth. That means that the Holy Spirit will help us to have a more committed, profound and better understanding and appreciation of Jesus Christ. The third function of the Holy Spirit is help. Help is the assistance we need in order to accomplish or complete a task. When Jesus says, I am sending another advocate, in other words, he was saying he's sending another helper for us. The Holy Spirit comes to help us. St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, even in our prayers, when we can't choose words rightly, the Spirit gives us all chances that are beyond words. My dear friends, we are simply helpless without the Holy Spirit, and He comes to help us. The fourth function of the Holy Spirit here is in our prayer. Prayer is the channel through which we communicate and sustain our relationship with God. And since God is Spirit, John chapter 4 from verse 23 to 24 tells us that the true worshippers of God worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is through the agency of the Spirit that we are able to communicate with God. In fact, prayer that is said in spirit means that our spirit has an active and functional communication with the Spirit of God. To this end, St. Paul advised the church in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, to pray always in the Spirit. My dear friends, any prayer offered outside the ambience of the Holy Spirit is lip service, as we can see in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. Moving forward, my dear friends, the Pentecost experience has not ended. We are invited to move and function in that same capacity. By Pentecost experience, we mean an ever-recurrent renewal in us. It implies inner transformation and change for us to become what God wants us to be. It also means active spiritual encounter that unites us as one, like those who we are gathered together at the upper room. Living by the Pentecost experience involves an openness to the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, piety, fortitude, fear of God, and counsel. It also means the ability to bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, 
the fruit of peace, of love, of joy, of kindness, of gentleness, of faith, of self-control, of gentleness and patience, as we see in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. My dear friends, let us continue to live by the invitation of this Pentecost experience. May our life become a Pentecost experience itself, so that those around us will begin to experience Christ, just like the 3,000 people who heard Peter on the day of Pentecost. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your loving presence. By the pledge of the Pentecost experience, we ask you, the Holy Spirit, to recreate and make us the newest version of ourselves. Help us in our weakness. Empower us. Reborn us. Teach us. Guide us. Give us boldness. And above all, make us to be acceptable to God at the end of our lives. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Pentecost Sunday.